welcome to Off the Edge with me, your host, Cam Jordan. Can't wait to talk about everything else that did not pertain to the Saints losing, but I'll talk about that too. So that's what we'll probably start off. I'm also going to bring in, you know, just the reaction to Dre Greenlaw's ejection in the, the 49er Eagles game. Who was right? Who was wrong? Stick with me. We'll talk about it. And then I'm going to bring in one of my teammates, one of my one of my friends, my my guys on the squad, you know, man with three interceptions, a man who just got the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee, Tyron Matthews. So stick with me on Off the Edge with me, your host. Let's get into it. Start this off right and proper. We're going to say... The Saints are officially on a streak on the losing side, and that does not feel great. I hate it. Uh, we have now lost our third game in a row and to the Detroit Lions, which I think are a really good team, led by Dan Campbell, who was formerly the New Orleans Saints, Aaron Glenn on the defensive coordinator side, who was with the New Orleans Saints. Um, you know, you know, you lose to Detroit by touchdown, and and honestly, the Saints have been digging themselves in a hole at the beginning of the game. Uh, for the last few games, you can clearly see a noticeable change in how we lose games when we start off trailing and not by trailing by one touchdown or, you know, it's, it's multiple scores. Um, and that's, you know, just the tail of the tape is when you have a, a horrendous first quarter, you dig yourself too deep in a hole, it's hard to fight out. And the team has a lot of fight. The team has a lot of heart. The team has a lot of get back. You can see it in the tail of the tapes when you turn on the second half and the defense is astounding the second half doesn't mean like if you don't come out hot and play a complete 60 minutes you're clearly beatable and that's where we are um so we have to find our way to correct this first quarter we correct the first quarter we start off hot you know we go into the halftime up i don't see us losing to anybody uh minus the one time we lost our quarterback in the third quarter and Derek carr and james took over and we lost to green bay packers you know, when we t- when we take a, a early on lead, a commanding lead, and we don't look back, that's how you end up with the game like we played against the Patriots, 35-0. That's what I'd like to see for the remaining five games. I'd like to see us starting hot, fast, quick, and never look back. Let's get there. And also, you know, this game, I, I think I got relegated to a whole 17 or 18 snaps. 17. I'd like to say 17, which I'd say is new. But also, you know, we – we uh Atlanta game, we – I'm not sure what liberties I'm 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 at liberty to divulge in the information about uh, an injury, but I had an injury that I was dealing with, you know, um, and made it to the point where I got to work out day before the game, and everything was good, and you know, got to practice the Saturday to play Sunday, and so whatever role that was given, I'm willing to accept and do to the fullest of my abilities. Uh, and so as I get healthier, I assume I'm going to rapidly just be healed. I'll be delivered because, you know, I feel like the body wants what the body wants and the mind and body want the same thing. We want to play football and help our team contribute, help our team win to whatever capacity that we're allowed. So we're going to go get it. You know, again, five games left. We've got an uh, in-division opponent coming coming to us this week in the Carolina Panthers. So we have to be able to. Uh, get after Bryce Young, make him uncomfortable in the pocket. You know, we have to be the difference. The D-line has to be the difference maker, being able to shut down the run and get after Bryce Young. It just is what it is. It needs to happen, has to happen, so we don't have this conversation next week. Uh, even though we lost this game, there's a lot of wins on the field just from guys being able to play, guys like Zach Bond getting a sack, also as, as well as, you know, just guys in general supporting their foundation, bringing awarenesses to their causes because this week was a My Cleats, My Cause week where, you know, guys get to do just that, wear cleats that are customized to bring awareness to their cause. Some guys had, you know, a teammate of mine had awareness th- thyroid cancer. Uh, my guy, uh, Tyre Matthews, you know, represented his his uh, foundation. He'll, he'll tell us about that when he comes in and, and, and with the interview. Bringing in our next topic uh, being the, you know, situation of the 49ers-Eagles games. I'm irritated with the family after the game, you know, trying to take my, t- trying to take my cool decompress from football. And I turn on football. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but we're watching the 49ers Eagles game and you see uh, Dre Greenlaw getting kicked out of a game 
for a, a tackle that led to a sideline where the Eagles thought he gave a little bit extra sauce um, and, you know, a little – little scuffle ensues. I'm not going to call it a fight. A little scuffle, a little pushing contest ensues between the players. You know, the players. And, of course, somebody who was not a player had nothing really to do with the blood, sweat, and tears uh, being out in the game. But I'm sure he was all bought in. You know, he's clearly uh, a man was, uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen T-shirts, sweatshirts, whatever it is, Twitter posts, Instagram posts about uh, you don't mess with whatever his name is, the, the older gentleman that's been a security th- uh, personnel. We've got a security guy on our team and I've never seen him, you know, our guy, Danny Lawless would never, I don't think I'm going to say that now, but like, if it ever happens, I'm going to stick up for Danny anyways. But the Philadelphia Eagles uh, security personnel got into the fray. Like you're 60, bro. Relax. Like you got brittle bones. Maybe you're not 60, 50, 45, you know, but maybe you just let the players play and the players handle it. And you, Stay in your lane. By the way, he did not stay in his lane, and Dre Greenlaw felt like he was a threat and addressed him, gave him a little, hey, mind your business, and somehow gets thrown out of game for – I'm still not clear on why he got thrown out of the game. And then, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles security guy got got kicked out the game as well, but I think for for Philadelphia, it was probably a phenomenal trade, you know. Uh, My boy from, from Philly. You know, really from Jersey, but my, my my college teammate from from Philly was was in town and was like was like, man, that's not a bad trade off. A security personnel for one of their top defensive players will take it every time. So it just is what it is. I don't feel any type of way about it other than stay in your lane, let the players handle it. it just is what it is. Appreciate you coming on for uh for my podcast off the edge with, with your boy. Um, and, you know, I just want to ask you things straight off the rip. You know, I'm going to say thank you for the illustrious Honey Badger. I, 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 I'm going to say you've got so many nicknames, I don't know where to start. You know, we call you Five. We call you Honey Badger, Tyrant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. T, T5. I'm st- I like, I'm just variations here, you know, but three, three-time three Pro Bowler, a man with over 30 interceptions in his career because he just had a two-piece because, like, before the season, I think he was at 29. We talked about that joint. Yeah. Then I know you had a two-piece and you had one before that for the tutty against the Patriots. I mean, you're sitting at 32 tutties. Yeah. Off the, oh, you know, 32 interceptions anyways, but a few of them for tutties. I appreciate you just being on the podcast with me, bro. I appreciate you just taking a little bit of your time. I know you're busy over in the North Shore. You know, uh, the the man, the myth, the legend that went to St. Aug from New Orleans lives 45 minutes out. Yeah. My, my, my first question is, why you live so far away from home, bro? You came home and you and you decided to move across the water. Man, to be honest, bro, um, I don't have a problem with living on the, on the uh, South Shore, uh, but... You know, I think the North Shore, man, I got three kids. So, you know, I think that, like, the idea of, like, uh, you know, having, like, the big backyard, big front yard, you know what I mean, nice pool. Um, you know, you could do that, I feel like, on the North Shore. You know, a little bit more than you could on the, on the Okay, I'll say, I'll say, come on, come on, there's yeah. Kenner. You could be a Kenner, <laughs> bro. You could have been in Gabriel with everybody else with big houses. Right, right. You could have old, old Metairie, you know, with that old money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Wherever Drew live and, and Peyton and the man is in them, I'm sure you could have been right in that neighborhood, somewhere in Garden District or Lower, lower Garden District or whatever that is down in, down in New Orleans. Nah, I mean, that's probably true. But um, to be honest, though, bro, I like I like taking in that drive, like to work and like from work. That's you know crazy what I mean? work. So, uh, you that's know. your decompression time. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? So then it's a little bit of a long time too. So uh, you know, I appreciate that. Bro, you your uh your uh my my cause, my cleats, week thirteen in NFL, everybody gets to put, you know, their own foundation, somebody else's foundation, support somebody else's foundation. Like I went St. Jude's uh children's hospital just because I love the phenomenal work that they do. Uh I went to go to Memphis this off season and I was like, bro, I was like I I, I walked around the campus, I was like, this is I was like, why don't I do more with this? You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't I do more for somebody else? But you know, your organization and what is it? What what does it mean and what does it represent for you? Well, uh, my my organization. Uh, I started my foundation, man. I, I want to say probably like eight nine years ago, and uh, you know, the 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 real inspiration for me was was always my grandmother. You know what I mean? Because uh, you know, in my mind, in my eyes, really, man, like she was like the first person that I saw that. Um, like was always like in that service mode, you know what I mean? Like just willing to help people. Like, and my grandmother didn't have much, but 
you know, whatever she, she did have, it. you know what I mean? She was willing to share. And when I got drafted to Arizona, man, like it was a good, it was a good situation for me because um I was around a good I was around a good group of football players, like guys that's probably going to the Hall of Fame. Um, but those dudes was like legit off the field too. You know what I mean? Like uh, you know, Calais Campbell and you know, Larry Fitzgerald, Patrick Peterson. I think Fitz and Calais like one man of the year. You know what I mean? So like um those guys were like heavy in the community, like for me as a rookie, you know what I mean? So I soaked up a lot of that game and uh, you know, I always told myself, like, man, once I get to like my second contract, like once I'm straight and secure, um, uh, you know, I do much more, you know, in the community. Uh so it's kind of worked out like that for me. Um, but this year, man, uh uh I, I chose to represent every year I choose to represent my foundation. Uh, but this year was a little different because uh, you know, lately I've partnered with, you know, Son of a Saint. Uh, right. which is an organization, you know, from New Orleans, uh, based in New Orleans. And it got a lot to do with, uh, you know, black, uh, young black kids who uh, may need a, like a father figure, you know, maybe mm -hmm. they need a mentor, you know, a role model to look up to. So, uh, you know, that, that was kind of personal for me. So it's been cool working with them. And uh, yeah, Shout out, Sonny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah they, hey, they, whatever Sonny's last name is, I've never known, but... <laughs> I don't think I know it neither, bro. Now that you say that, and been, hey, and been and been dealing with, with with son of a saint for, and I feel bad now, eight nine years. <laughs> yeah, man, but now nah, it's been cool to work with them, bro, and uh, just meet you know a lot of the kids, you know, uh, you know yeah. that, that they've been a big blessing too. Yeah, man, son of a saint. That that's the uh, the last time I, I normally. Since I've been in New Orleans, I take one of these young bucks under my wing while they're in high school, you know what I'm saying? Like a yeah. mentor mentee program. And once they get off to college, I send them on their way. Right. The last last kid I sort of was, you know, mentoring uh Trey Hand, his dad was Norm Hand, played for the Saints back in the gap, whatever. Got him from son of a saint. Mm. Trey Hand never left, bro. He just like inserted himself to the family. Boy right. in college <laughs> at University of Arkansas, uh Monticello, Monticello, whatever it is. I'm still talking to him almost weekly. I'm like, hey, man, are you supposed to spread your wings and fly already, bro? I'm, right. I, I should have a new mentee already. Yeah. He's like, nah, bro, I'm family. You know what I'm saying? But that's right. just, that, that part of New Orleans, bro, is, is just the community feel is always there, the, you know, the, the family feel. I try and tell people, like, when they come here and aren't from here or don't know nothing about New Orleans, I was like, if, if anything, the strongest part of that about this fan base is it feels like a real family. Like, yeah. they, when you hurting, they hurting. You know, yeah. they'll tell you straight up on the streets, like, hey, when we win... You know, when we win, it's good in the city. Oh, yeah. And we, we, when the, oh, when yeah. the Saints lose, you know, yeah. crime yeah. goes up. <laughs> crime. Black Air Force energy comes out quick. Right, right. <laughs> Sp speaking of being local, why do we call you five? You you was like seven at LSU when it was a prime number. Yeah. You was 32 in Arizona and in, in Houston. Kansas City for show was 32. Yeah. Hey, you for show 32 here. Where five come from? And why like so so, so five so so five. I don't think I've ever really told the story. So five actually comes from uh it has it has a lot to do with my grandmother. So uh most if you ask any most people and you ask, hey, where Tyrant's from, most people will probably say the seven war. Seven war. And yeah. they're right. Right? Ish. But there's like a catch, you know, like like my first couple years on earth, I live 2930 Orleans Avenue, which is the fifth ward. Now, the, the people that know me, they know that. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like where the five come from, you know, because I'm like a seven ward dude, but Yo. everybody know like, man, he might really be from the fifth ward. That's where his grandma, that's where his grandma lives. That's where, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, that's <laughs> so, where people uh, stay. Okay. Yeah, that, that's where the five come from. And that's actually where my jersey number come from. Uh, three 32. plus two. So, uh, you know, three plus two. And so, uh, yeah, man, that's like, a, uh, what is that? Like a little history lesson. Yeah, man, man. And here and here, I'm like, yeah, that boy really from the seventh line. Say, you know, right, right. <laughs> de defense dinner, you take us out to the seventh ward. Right, you know, you, right. you take the whole defense to the seventh ward. I'm like, man, he's just showing yeah. love to, to his yeah. peoples. Yeah. Man, from the fifth ward. Right. You see my blood there, man. Yeah. Man, I'm in the <laughs> locker room like, I'm like, T. You don't be answering the T. I'm like five. Turn right around. Right. I'm like, <laughs> bro, that's crazy. I mean, we talk, we talk about the locker room too. But you was like <laughs> earlier this season, bro. You had one interception. 
And he was like, man, I was like, I, I gotta turn, I gotta pick up my pants, boy. Like, I ain't never not led the team in interceptions. And then you they, then you had that two piece, right? And like you like he's, you right on time now. Like, where where'd that come from and what you see for the rest of these last five games? Five. To be honest, bro, um, man, I just see uh, and not just me, bro, but I see all us like uh like just doing whatever it takes to win, bro. Um, and I mean, you know how it is on the defense side of the ball. Like, you know, the more, the, the, the more you can take the ball away, bro. And, uh, you know, especially like in, you know, late November, December, you know, going into the playoffs, like you want to, you want to be able to, you know, take the ball away and kind of help that, you know, help you build momentum, bro, and confidence. So, uh, I think defensively, bro, like that's like the motto for, I mean, even you, like, if somebody would ask, hey, do you want to just sack the quarterback or do you want to sack and take the ball from him? You'd be like, hey, to, I, want, to trip that I want the whole – I want the hat trick. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. I want the sack, the fumble, and I want to recover it. You know what I'm saying? So, need it. Yeah, bro. So, uh, man, I just I just see all of us, man, just, just, just playing way more, uh, you know, aggressive, you know, hungrier, um, you know, just trying to do whatever it takes, bro. Right, you're right. See, see, that's like when you had that two interception game. They were like, "Oh, it's vintage Tyre Matthews." I was like, "Vintage? This boy eating? What well, vintage? Sound like he oh, <laughs> right? Like, right. What, what, like what's, up, what's up with this vintage part? Like, man, you know how I get, bro. When you when you when you get over thirty, bro, you know, man. I, look, I hear you, but I don't, if I don't <laughs> see no slowdown, I don't hear you. I'm over here looking like man. If if they always if they're already quick to be like, oh, he he older. All right, well, tell some of these young boys to start out working them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that makes everybody else elevate if you know if you know what you're doing, shoot. Make them young put the young bucks pressure on one time. Right. Like we, we gotta make we gotta make them step up too. For sure. No doubt, bro. Tell me about uh the leadership in the DB room. Cause you know me. You know what I'm saying? Like w, WD's loud. I'm overly loud and active in the team. <laughs> and then you bring up your leadership, you know, to to the to the DBs, which I've always said DBs in every every team ever, just I swear they don't like each other. Like in my mind. Like D line, you're always gonna be like the closest knit, right? D line, any team I've ever been on, the D line hangs out together, right? Yeah. We hang out every Thursday, win, lose, or draw. You know, if the def- even if the defense don't hang out, the defensive line is gonna hang out. Well, you know how it is on the back end, bro. A lot, y'all a lot always of, on an island. Yeah, but too, bro. A lot of us um, were supposed to play like offense. We just we just weren't good enough. So I I don't know if you. You know, I don't know if we got a little bit of that diva, you know, in us. You know what I mean? We think it's all yeah. about us, you know, uh, that that prime time syndrome. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, but nah, bro. I, I think I think we got a good DB room. Um, right. You know, we, we got some dudes that could, that could really play. You know, I think for me, bro. Uh, you know, every day knowing like I got like a young DB room, um, it's just being consistent, like showing those dudes what a consistent pro look like. Um, you know, in meetings, um, you know, obviously on the field, um, just just trying to take care of my business the right way, knowing that um, even if those dudes not necessarily asking me for advice, a lot of them are watching me, right? right. And so, um, I mean, that's how some people learn too. They don't necessarily communicate with you. They they can watch what you do and watch how you act, and you know what I mean. Like it can kind of shape their perspective or, you know, like Absolutely. their direction. So I just try to be like a, like a sound person for them, bro. Like a sound mind. Uh, I, t- I try to, I try to tell them the truth. You know what I mean? All the time. Right. Um, Keep a shoot a, shoot a buck at all times for yeah, sure. bro. And, um, but you, bro, you do, you do it as such a, like a calm demeanor, bro. Like you so level in the room. <laughs> like I'd be like, I'd be like, bro, I don't know how this shit shake. Cause you know me, I'd be out there shaking a the room up. I'm right. coming, I'm coming D-line. Now this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. This is what we're going to yeah. do. This is where we're going. Like and they, it's a response. You be like, right. "Hey man, that ain't right." If the boys just be like, "Right," hey, he, he, if he's saying it, he mean that. Yeah, shit. yeah, for sure, bro. Um, and you know, like I said, I think a lot of that got to do with like you know each and every day that they're gonna get the same time. You know what I mean? Like, so they could count on that consistency, which is crazy, bro. Because like when you came in to the league, bro, you had vets like you know Pat P was your dog from LSU, right. you know over uh, over at the Cardinals. But mm-hmm. you know, you, I feel like you could relate so much more to these guys because you know, like, yeah, I was a first rounder. You were, you know, you you were coming from LSU. You were that guy. And then you face some adversity over LSU. You know, say you had obstacles overcome. They they try to hit you with that like troubled 
the, the troubled youth syndrome or, or some right. so you, you fell a couple rounds into the draft, right? Right. But bro, your your story about you being consistent it just like elevating your play every year. Like I feel like some of these guys don't really know what you've done and what you've accomplished, bro. So like the, the when you're cool calling to me and I'm like, bro, these like these boys are taking it for what it is. Like this is tiring now. I'm like, bro, if you tell them the real, like how you started off this like yeah, when everybody yeah. was really accounted you out, but you was just too cold to be counted out. Right. Like I feel like that would be that would hit home for some of these I almost called them, you know, knuckleheads. Listen, right, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, I'm like bro, I'm like, bro, like y'all don't know what you got in this room right here. And you, bro, you so humble, like you don't even mention it. I'm like, like this, like he used to wear number seven at LSU, like he was that guy. Like you can, there's only one of them. Like there's a playmaker in the rock number seven. You know, you come into the league, you he punt returner doing like playing, playing that little, you know, that roam around boy was out there getting really active. Like they they know you from Kansas City years. I'm like, bro, like look at his body of work. Oh yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. You got to tell them. Like, I'm mean, I like, I'm like, I'm like, if I tell them, I'm like, right, you be, right. bro, you should be so even, consistent, bro. It's crazy, man. I just, I, I, I mean, like I said, bro, I, I don't really, um, you know, I don't try to be nothing special, you know, um, and you know, I definitely don't try to uh, force anything, you know, yeah. on anybody, you know what I mean. So, uh, man, some dudes come around earlier. Right. Like, you you know, you may, you know, we may sign a dude tomorrow. Right. And he may gravitate towards me and ask me like, you know, man, how you did it. Right. Like, like how you, how you stuck around so long. And, and then, you know, other guys, it, it, it may take them a while, you know what I mean? To, to come around and, you know, ask like those real questions. Hey, speak about, speaking about guys, like we just signed a cat, like, what was that? A week ago, Sherm, two weeks ago. Yeah. I just, it was like, I always, I've always talked about it on this podcast or whatever. Like, it just brings me back to you, of course, like that business side of football, even like even though you play for the home team now, like I remember we we copped, you know, we copped you off free agency. What does that free agency feel like? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is what does that feel like in terms of being at a team? And like when you came to us from from uh, Kansas City, like, bro, you they didn't even offer you like did that add a chip right. on your shoulder? Like, how did it make you feel? How are you like, you know, how did that change your mindset? And if it did at all? Man, to be honest, bro, uh, I think for some dudes, free agency is, right, like, I mean, it's probably, like, one of the best moments of their life, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of them go on to, you know, sign, you know, pretty good, you know, contracts, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and I think for other players, it's different, you know. Uh, for me, for example, right, um, and, I mean, we was kind of talking about it earlier, right, in the show, um, I've always felt, uh, a responsibility to like the communities I played in. And so, um, you know, most players don't do it, right? right. Like, like most guys aren't invested outside of the defensive meeting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, like, boys be like, going home and like act like nothing else exists. You know, like so all these, like, all these schools out here, all these people that you could like touch affect, be around, learn your community, do all this. Like, anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, be around. Bro. But, you know, uh, man, for me, like, it was tough because, um, like, I didn't know I was going to the Saints. I didn't know, like, I didn't know the situation that was, like, waiting for me, right? Yeah. So, you know, when you, when you it, like, have those type of, you know, uh, moments, like, where, man, you like, damn, you like, bro, I just sacrificed three years. It's like, I gave everything I could, you know, to whatever organization, Right. And so and then it's time for you to move on and want a Super Bowl. But like, right. And, and for some players, it's easy to move on. You know what I mean? Like they don't really care. And I think for other players, which is a small percentage, like like they, they wear that. You know what I yeah. mean? And so uh, but the blessing in my situation was, you know, even though it took me a while, you know, to kind of get over. You know, That's like, what I'm saying. Like, damn, I ain't about to be a chief no more. And, you know, I got kids that you know, like love the Chiefs and, you know, and, you know, I, I got a family, like, you know what I mean? Like, like this, well, this is our home, right? And, you know, now you got to pick up and, and move. So it's a lot of those type of, you know, uh, conversations and, you know, is issues you got to kind of iron out. Um, but, but the blessing for me was, man, like, you know, like I got a chance to come back home. You know, I got a chance to come back to the crib. So, you know, as bad as it kind of stung for me, like, damn, you know, I ain't going to be a part of that no more. But, 
you know, you never know what God got waiting on you. So uh, to the crib we go. That was a blessing for me, bro. But 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 some dudes, man, like they don't have that. You know, I know. Look, we we signed you, and then I was like, all right, cool. And then you didn't show up to training camp, and I was like, hey, what what the hell just happened? They're like, and he was like, yeah, he's had, he's he's having some some uh, family issues. Like, you just had to get your mind right from that. Like, I never asked, and I've always wondered. Like, right. I like, yeah, I was like, bro. man, I was like, man, he coming home. He got to make sure, he got to make sure everybody everybody knows he here for business and not pleasure. Right, and man, that was that was important for me, bro. You know, um, and you know, I think I had, you know, I've been in the league long enough. You know, I've, I've done a lot of good things, right, and. Um, you know, I, I felt like I had kind of earned that grace, right, to to be able to um, take that time, right? Because you see dudes that don't take the time, right? And then into it. after a while, you're like, damn, what happened to him? Like, well, like, why, why, why is it like that with him? You know what I mean? And it could be, you know, him getting in trouble. It could be, it could be a bunch of different things. You know what I mean? And so, for me, man, you 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 try to avoid that because, you know. When you when you lock in on a football season like that, that's important. You know what I'm saying? Like like that's what's putting food on the table. Like that's what's allowing your kids to travel the world and right. So like you, you won't be all in, right? Like you don't want half of your mind to be on football, and then the other half you worrying about all these different things that that's kind of going on outside of it. So, um, but yeah, bro, like 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 that's what happened. Really? I was like, I've, I've been waiting. I was like, we talked. I was like, I was like, you're like, man, I'm good now. I was like, good now. What the hell yeah. that mean? Like, well, right. like, all right. And then we got to the season. You've been locked in forever, forever. And yeah. to the you know second year with the team, you know, three interceptions in. I'm, I'm like, bro, he gonna finish with six. I don't care. I'm calling it, bro. Uh, yeah. So that being said, bro, everything that you you know you've done, city, city, community, community, with your foundation, team up with son of son of a saint, uh, leads you to you know. Now uh, being told, you know, you're the, the Saints Walter Payton Man of the Year, uh, you know, candidate in, in in for New Orleans. Like, how does that make you feel? Does it feel, feel different than anywhere else? Does it feel, feel different because it's hometown and you you like you really got the key to the city? Like, yeah, bro. Seven um, seven war five. Man, because you know, really, bro. Like that. That's 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 why I did it. You know what I mean? Um, you know that that that's why you do the right things. That's that's why you know you try to get your life on track. Um, it wasn't for like people that didn't know me, right? You know what I'm saying? Like like you don't try to put together a successful life or a successful career for people that don't know you, right? You want people that do know you to to be proud of you. You know what I mean? And uh, and so like like I say that to say, bro, like my motivation has always been New Orleans. Right. And, and like trying to make my people proud and, you know, trying to make my family proud. And, you know, like my grandmother not here no more, but like I know she'll be, you know, like for sure proud. You Absolutely. Know what I'm saying? So for me, bro, um, man, it's just a full circle moment because it's like, damn, like, like all of because because a lot of times, bro, like early on in my career. Right. Like uh, when I was, quote, unquote, uh a different person, you know, right. even though I was, was always the same person, right? I was just a 18, 19 year old who, you know, got in trouble. You know right. What I'm saying? And they like, just hit you uh, with that troubled youth ASAP. Like, oh, he's tr- trouble. Come on. Right? One, one so, incident doesn't make you trouble. <laughs> right. But, you know, early on in the league, bro, like you, especially me, I missed out on what I feel like is a lot of fun because I was so focused on the game, right? Like I wanted to have a successful career. So, Man, I ain't start going on vacations to like my fourth year in the league. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and all season but, none, none, bro. Like, and but but that was like the level of sacrifice like that I yeah. that I had, right? And so, but you don't feel that when you're doing it, right? You like, damn, all my teammates going they in the Bahamas, they they this way, like they having a ball, and here you is just so focused on not messing it up, and so you know. There was some moments early on in my career where I'm like, damn, bro, like it don't even feel like I'm in the league because, you know, I'm so serious, right? Like, like I'm just trying to do the right thing. So, so it's good to look back on that, bro, and be like, damn, you, you made the right decision. Like you was doing the right things, like, right. Um, like all that paid off. So, uh, what yeah, was man, what was, what was that transition though? Like, was that was that you adding on oh. like 
meditating? Was that you, like, you know, guys, guys in the locker room, we have doc, Dr. Cham- Chambliss or whatever, you know, a therapy right. coach. And like, and I only say that because I know there's a stigma around athletes or even black men in general, you know, right. not wanting to go to therapy. And I'm like, bro, like, go talk it out. I try and tell, you know, my young bucks now, I'm like, hey man, talk to somebody sooner rather than later. Like I didn't even think about talking to a therapist or having therapy sessions or even somebody you can bounce ideas off until I was like eight years in. And you you try yeah. it out, you're like, this ain't bad. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I won't see you every week, but I see you sometimes. <laughs> right, right. Man, I, I, I love therapy. Actually, we was just talking about it, you know, last uh last year for training camp. Like yeah. I think I missed like six practices, like Three of those days, I was like, like in a um, uh, it was like a wellness therapy uh, you know, center, right? So like, I'm I'm always down for that. Like, I still I still got my therapist, you know that I, that I talk to. What the hell is a wellness yeah. ther- therapy center? Like a sit like ordained? Man, like it's, it's like a resort? Like man, it's like uh, it's like a like, car wash for the mind. Yeah, bro. Basically, uh, but it's like different things. Like obviously, you know, any therapist session, right? It, People, most people think of therapy and they think of like, oh man, I gotta sit in front of somebody and tell them my whole life story. And, and they're gonna people, and they're gonna try to find the root to all my problems. Like, don't right, solve me. You know, a lot of people don't like doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really like doing it, but I know when I have to do it, it's kind of cool to release that. But the place I went to, man, it's like, man, you go for walks on the lake. You know, you uh, they got like horse therapy. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, it's just you on the horse and you, you know, rubbing the horse. Man, it's crazy, bro. But it's like, it's therapeutic. Right. You, you, know you, 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 and, you and your zen. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, bro. Uh, but, 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 but my transition, bro, uh, was, it was serious, bro, because obviously you, you do the therapy, you know, part of it. But, right. you know, I had started uh, really getting into like yoga, you, you know what I'm saying? And like meditation, right? And, um, you know, uh, a lot of people that I work with in Arizona, uh, I credit them too, man, because I had like a good kind of support system. Like I said, bro, I had Larry and Calais and Pat, so it's like right. I had I had all their resources. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So man, uh, shoot, you probably even had Darnell Dockett, big strong, big strong. Like you need oh, some, yeah, you need yeah, some muscle yeah. therapy, bro. But Doc wasn't into that though. Doc was trying. Doc was to, lifting. Doc was trying. Doc, doctor was trying to take me out, buy me Jordans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he was trying. He wanted me to enjoy myself. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, team jump man, jump man. Shout out Jordan, Jordan yeah. Brand. Oh, I love it, bro. Like, like I said, I just like I like to talk about just you know that mental health and wellness too, because in this game, bro, we give so much to it. So you like you give and give and give and give and realize you depleted without knowing that you depleted. Like, why am I edgy? Why am I irritable? Why am I, you know, my body hurts, my mind hurts, and, and like, you know, my family still wants to to, to cuddle and lay down. You like, bro, don't touch me. Why? You know what I'm saying? Like, or you know, all I, all I do is 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 deal with football, and then I'm in, out in public. I'm dealing with fans, so you know, you you don't even really know your real self. So sometimes it's cool to just decompress and, and figure out who you are. And sometimes you need other people to help you with that. You know, again, just to bounce yeah. ideas off. So I just, I just love you know, trying to break that stigma of like, we don't need to talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, as human beings, we're social people. And right. it's, it's, we're supposed to communicate. We're supposed right, to communicate. Right. right. Yeah. My wi- wifey is definitely going to use that against me on this episode. She was like, so we're supposed to communicate. Just not. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, I do. Just <laughs> what you want? All my inner feelings? Come on, relax. Take it easy. <laughs> Disclaimer right now. But uh, all right, let's let's get off that heavy and get into something light. You know, coming from coming from New Orleans, uh, I want to know what your uh what your favorite restaurant is out here. My favorite restaurant, bro? Yeah. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I don't even think it's a restaurant, bro. What you what you mean? I mean like Cause you know some places sell food, but it's like, should they be selling food? Should they be selling food? But the, but the food decent though, you know. <laughs> like so, it's like you know. But nah, bro. So they got a store called the Red Rooster, and I like I said, I don't think it's a restaurant. Like, like the like the hot sauce. Yeah. Okay. But, so, but the catch is, it's like around the corner from the Magnolia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. But they got the best hot sauce sandwich in the world, bro. But coming coming anywhere to to New Orleans and everybody pushing hot sausage didn't hit Dude. right for me. It didn't hit right for me for a long Dude, time. Dude, They're like, 
They're like, bro, hey, elite, boudin. Very elite, bro. Indeed. I love them. I love high sizes. I think I love them too, bro, because I don't eat them as much now since I've been back home, right? Because, like, you can get them. Like, right. whenever. Right? Right. But it's like, bro, when I was living in Arizona, in Kansas City, we had, I couldn't... Right. I couldn't wait to get a hot you, sausage. I'll say, you, hey, you know I'm from Arizona, so that's what I'm saying. That hot <laughs> sausage was not on no platter. You could get chorizo. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> you you right, get your right. chorizo, chorizo uh, burrito up in that thing, five eggs. You know, sometimes put fries, guac, yeah. you know, pico, and some chorizo. You ain't getting no hot sausage, boy. Like, nah, nah, bro. Nah, out out bro. here, I'm like, I'm like, you want hot sausage? Why are you always forcing this issue, fam? <laughs> 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 nah, I would like turkey sausage, please. <laughs> right. Now I need to know what other slang comes from New Orleans. Buku is really from Baton Rouge, but like it could be from New Orleans. Like it could be. It could. I feel like I was. I feel like I was saying Buku when I was in the first grade, which is, which is just. I think back on just moments like that, and I'm like, like is that really? Like, you, was, you was using that word in the first grade. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> just so so young, too young to be so ignorant. You know? <laughs> to me, Buku, Buku just mean more. You know what I'm saying? Land, yeah. Buku. I ain't start using land yet until I got to New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Land, yeah, land, yeah. Land, yeah, land yeah, definitely a, a New Orleans French word. That's New Orleans for sure. Yeah, or, or, you know, you have a birthday, like, bro, I, you know, I, I just turned 18 everywhere else in the world except New Orleans. Boys be out here. I just made 18. I just made 18. Just, I just made 31. I just made 38. And I'm like, bro, why, why, why is that an accomplishment to make 31? Not like, okay, that's take your blessings. I just made groceries. What you mean you made? Right. Bro, that's probably the biggest transition <laughs> when you come to New Orleans. Something like, yeah, I just made groceries. How you make the groceries, word, fam? A, a lot of the words are like in the wrong spot. You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't be that. It should be another word. Yeah, you know switch, switching that joint up. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, G Nike for show. Got to be the different slang word. G, like, yeah. G, I've heard, you know, G Fazos, Forces, you know, some ones, whatever you're going But G Nike's New Orleans. Buku, we're going to say New Orleans. Yeah. You know, we, we gonna just, we're just going to throw made. I made 18. I made groceries. Like, like, that's just, right. it don't, don't add up, still add up out here. And they got more. It's like a million of those words, bro. You got, hey, you get down to New Orleans and them boys start start rattling off and you be like, I don't think I'm on this conversation anymore. And so right. I went, went around way, we had make, we had make, we had make some food real quick, make some groceries, yada, 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 little, little jit done turn. I'm like, bro, where do we go with this? And how did we get here? Who, who, who made y'all to speak like this? To be honest, bro, I think it all goes back to the gumbo saying. It's just like, you just got a bunch of different people, bro, from like a bunch of different places and... You know, like they're all trying to talk the same language, but they speak different languages. And these are the words we end up with. Right. You know, buku. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, like, fr the French Creole, <laughs> some uh, Native American, <laughs> Spanish somewhere. Then all the, the, the right. dip that into a big bowl of gumbo, which is New Orleans. Uh, 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 right. Well, anyway, bro, I'm going to get you out of here. I'll try and keep it at 30, but I'm always going over. That's my fault. I, nah, you good, bro. Hey, I appreciate you tapping in, bro, with, with, with your boy on Off the Edge. Like I said, I love, I love having uh, a podcast just to talk to my boys because I always get like, you know, the producer sending the, the cheat sheet of, of your boy. You're like, no, I knew he was the three-time Pro Bowler. No, I knew all this. He's Super Bowl champion. But I get, to, I get to learn like things I didn't know about, you know, like like I know what your middle name is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, <laughs> <laughs> I get that random. I'm like, I don't even, Divine, Devon, the right. Tyrant, Devon Matthew. <laughs> Huh, yeah, the coldest. I appreciate you tapping in, boy. Man, I appreciate you, brother. Let's just talk about, you know, what gets you hyped before games? What gets you hyped during games? The music you lead up to, I wake up and I, you know, I may start off with some some classical Mozart, some symphony number nines, you know. I, I Sometimes I wake up, I'm way too amped up, and then I have to calm myself back down. You know, I may put on a little Izzy Brothers. I may, you know, I, I, sometimes I wake up and I'm a little sleepy. I wake up, I'm like, damn, I need something. And I throw on some E-40, or I throw on some Dev the Dude, or I put on the K Kendrick Lamar, you know, or I, I, or I slap some, uh, some, what you mean? Huh? You know, sometimes I got those some juvenile on or some Lil Wayne, you know? It just depends on the day. And as the day progresses and you get close to the game, you just keep on slowly amping up that energy. Um, but either way, you listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of music before the game, you know, leading up to it. And I may not listen to any music, you know, 
for 30 minutes or so while I'm in the locker room because I'm getting my thoughts sorted out. I'm looking over notes for real quick. I got my headphones on, but nothing's probably playing. Uh, so I'm looking like like I'm looking like I can't be bothered because I'd rather not be bothered. I'm focusing in. I'm lo- I'm getting locked into the game. But that being said, right before the game, I'm always throwing on some like diabolical madness, you know, some some Method Man, I'm some Eminem, you know, uh, I throw in some Avenged Sevenfold, you know, it'll be some it'll be some like hardcore Metallica, like just some uh, wow, some 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 stuff, you know what I'm saying, before you go to battle. Um but that just brings me to it. You know, I feel like everybody has different music platforms. I was trying to support, you know, Tidal. I'm sure there's Apple out there, the Spotify, so many, so many different music, music uh, platforms to get your music from. Um, and I'm just sort of looking at it. What are, you know, my top five artists that I think I, I listen to, and then I'm going to say this season, I'm not even going to go the year. Cause then like, I'm not even trying to put that, that, that uh, spectrum out there, but I'd probably say it's, it's Rod Wave. Uh, it's J Balvin, Method Man, uh, Lil Wayne's coming bike, you know, uh, and then it's, it's a throw up, right? It's, it's probably between young Dolph or future. Maybe the edge goes to Kendrick Lamar. I don't know, but like, you know, somewhere in there. So I'm going to say J Balvin, Method Man, uh, young Dolph, Rod Wave and future. I, I'd be interested, you know, to figure out what am I missing with my, my, my uh, my top five top five you know artists maybe i maybe i'm missing something else i feel like i listen to a lot of artists that being said i appreciate y'all for everything y'all have done y'all tuning in these these few weeks y'all riding with the who that nation i assume y'all all is a saints nation fan because you know when it's black and gold what other colors could beat that you know black and gold just is a phenomenal colorway the saints are a phenomenal team i think we still have a phenomenal future ahead of us for these last five games appreciate you sticking with us. I appreciate you sticking with me. I appreciate y'all tuning in to Off the Edge with me, your host, Cam Jordan. Um, and, and honestly, I, I thank my dog, 532, number seven, uh, Honey Badger, Tyre Matthew, other New Orleans Saints, Walter Payton, man, Walter Payton, man of the year candidate for the New Orleans Saints, uh, aka Mr. Mr. Tyre Matthews himself for coming in and partaking and giving off knowledge and on the podcast so tune in tap in wherever you get your podcast apple podcast iheart radio app wherever else you find it tell your peoples tell your tell your folks tell all the buku people you know tell them you know what i'm saying bring them on in tell them you just tapped into one of the best podcasts out and off the edge with me your host peace